Welcome back. It's getting close to wrapping up this uh, this topic. We are now on to level two of our Richardson Maturity module. module. I don't keep calling it module. It's just a model. Um, one thing that you might have noticed so far is that we haven't really been using any of our HTTP verbs. We have been doing a post request for everything, pretty much. So we want to do a request to our appointment service. Oh, it's a post. We want to do a request to... Um, our doctors or our SWATs, hey, we're sending a post. And we probably could have also sent a get as well if we were just trying to get information. Get posts, they're pretty much, a, you know, a kind of a similar notion. Just one's a straight up request, one is sending data. Okay. We're not taking advantage of our HTTP verbs, which is a problem, right? We have all these lovely verbs that we can be using. We have get, put, patch. Um, post, delete, the entire gamut of the verbs that are available. Um, why aren't we using those for RESTful calls? Well, that's where level two comes into play. Effectively, here we are trying to use these things the way they were intended to be used. Right? When you're making a standard website, you very rarely will use patch or delete. Right? You're going to make a call to your web application. It's going to manually handle deleting something but you're probably going to trigger that via a get, or maybe a post request, right? Because you're clicking a link to delete something, or you are clicking the submit button on a form, which talks to your MySQL instance via PHP or Rails or whatever you're using. Uh, and this is just standard basic HTTP elements talking to each other. But once we start making RESTful APIs, we should actually, in theory, be taking advantage of these verbs because they all have very specific meanings. So in this case, let's bring in get, let's bring in post, let's bring in put, let's bring in patch, let's bring in all of them and use them as intended. So here, maybe instead of using post for getting a list of slots, again, here we have our different endpoints, doctors, M. Jones, slots, or slots slash one, two, three, four. Basically, this is doctor ID slash slots slot slash um, appointment ID, right? But I'm going to send a get call with particular information. I'm going to send a post call for packaging up our object of data. And again, we can send data in multiple ways here. But the basic differentiation here is that we are bringing in that extra cast of verbs. So here, when I am trying to get a list of appointments, why am I sending a post request? I could just send a get request, right? And in this case, it could come via query string, for instance. And you know, we we don't necessarily need to build up a form object. Okay, so let's send that along. We'll get our response back again. HTTP 200 OK. List of appointments. Nothing really different here. Well, then, based on this data, we can make a post call. Then, let's send along our particular packet with our appointment request for our patient. And then we're going to go ahead, finalize that appointment creation call. We'll get our data back for the slot that was confirmed, or maybe we'll get, you know, a denied, and we'll get some information about that. But basically, the idea here is, again, use these verbs as intended. Um, if I am going ahead and making a delete call, right, we can do this via curl. We can do this via, you know, something like Postman or yet another RESTful client. We can do it in multiple ways. But the idea here is that we just need to use them as intended. So if I want something to be deleted from this list, let's say that I have an appointment here. Okay, so I've got my appointment slot ID 1234. Here's the date and time that it's starting. Let's say I want to cancel it. So I would send a delete call via, um, again, one of these ways to send a packet along, or sorry, an HTTP call along with delete. And then the API would in turn delete that appointment, rather than sending something like get all of this information, ampersand delete equals true, or sending a post request where we are posting a call to delete something. Again, very slight differentiation here, but we're giving semantic meaning to these verbs. We are actually using them as intended. And I'm repeating myself now. Apologies. Okay. One other thing we can see here, too, is that we can also start using our HTTP responses as intended. So before we are seeing HTTP 200, okay, so everything is either fine 
or it's not fine, but we are still, you know, reporting data back. Well, with this, let's also start, not too far, using these particular response codes, whether we use a existing one, an existing one, or we use one that we make up and we document the purpose of this particular response code. In this case, we might say, hey, there's a 409 conflict. This appointment already exists. You can't use that. Okay, make a new request. Uh, effectively, what we are doing here is, again, using things as intended. So then the last step is level three, which is the basis for correct RESTful calls. So just as a refresher, level zero, we just are swinging XML or JSON back and forth, singular endpoints, no verbs other than post, for instance, very tightly coupled information. Level one, we add in different resources, meaning basically different endpoints to our server API or to our various APIs. Okay, level two, we add in verbs. Level three, I'm going to utterly butcher this acronym for how people probably use it. It's either hate OAS, H-A-T-E OAS. Basically, we are bringing in this idea of hypermedia um, to completely govern the interaction. This is fully decoupling our APIs from each other. Okay, so really the only, like the key difference here is that we are gonna use our verbs, we will use our response codes, we are going to have multiple endpoints, and we are going to send links back in our requests, or in our responses. So I'm gonna make a call in this example here. So we're still going to get a list of, a list of available slots from our um, appointment scheduling endpoint for this particular doctor, okay? We get a list of slots back, but with those, we are going to get a list of links. And what these links are going to do are enable whatever client is receiving them to continue onwards. So let's say that we send an appointment request for this Dr. M. Jones, okay? Say I want an appointment tomorrow. Well, this doctor just quit the, the practice, for instance. So I'm going to send this request to get a list of appointments back. And because the doctor is removed from the system, they no longer are scheduling appointments. Instead of just completely failing and erroring out or saying no appointments available, the secondary API here would send back a response saying, you know, doctor's not available. Here are a list of links for your application to follow to continue our interaction maybe request a appointment by this doctor, maybe follow this doctor to their new practice if they're all part of the same system. Basically, have a list of next steps for the client to iterate through, okay? So that's basically what this link, link field you see here is, okay? And then we talk to another endpoint and we're going to go ahead and get the same thing back. Let's get some follow-up links. Okay, maybe this appointment was created, so we get a 201 response back not a 200, so we're going to get a new location. And then we can basically change, say, the page header to the particular um, rendering of this appointment page. And what I mean here is, let, let's say that we send a 200 or 201 response. That'll change your page header, which basically redirects your browser to a new location. That's what I do for my personal website, if you remember that far back. But, you know, instead of just getting a 200, okay, good job, your appointment's created. We also get a place to send our user to, and that just redirects the browser. Uh, so the idea here then is, let's look at this in a little bit more detail. So I'm gonna make my get call. Again, nothing different here. We're going to get our list of slots back, but the difference here is that we add in this extra link, extra link field here, so the thing's highlighted in yellow. For this particular slot, if you wanna book it, here is the link to book that thing. Here is the particular URI in our server. Um, again, we're just adding navigation capabilities. And by doing this, two things happen. One, we fully decouple the client from our server or you know, our client from our API. Uh, and two, we add complexity <laughs> into the system because now not only do we have to render a web page, but we have to go through every single object, look for a link and see if we can continue this interaction much, much, much more extensible and a bit more complicated too, because now navigation's dynamically built. But 
if you read the dissertation from Dr. Fielding, if you read through his blog, this is the basic thing that you need to implement in REST. Otherwise, it's not REST. It's RPC, you know, which is, you know, it's up to your interpretation, I think, at this point, right? Okay, so we get our list of appointments here. We follow one of these particular links. We make a post to slots one, two, three, four, based on this here. We get a response back. Okay, your appointment was created. Here are all of the things you can do now once you create an appointment. Okay, what does this mean? We can cancel. We can add some tests. We can change our appointment time. We can update our contact info. We can go to the help menu. The idea here would be that these links don't appear until you make the appointment, right? So we get a little bit more of a dynamic application. Okay, so level zero through three with REST. Question's going to be, REST was proposed in the mid to late 2000s. We are now significantly along in the web. Um, is this different than what we know? Is it still applicable? If you are the creator of REST, Level three is the minimum precondition, right? You need this linking capability. And if you want to extrapolate here, this is the basis of things like the semantic web, where everything is linked to each other. Every object, every action has meaning. And it kind of gets into a very, very different space. Canonically and traditionally, REST is levels zero through two for most people, and that's just colloquially what they colloquially what they call it depends on your environment depends on you as personal how you want to think of it but again look at these levels and look at the level of complexity we are adding in and look for what's appropriate to you okay this video has gone on long enough one more and we will wrap this up I'll see you in the next one